Thank you again for inviting me. I'm um, it's a great pleasure and an honor to be here. Um, I just want to start by saying um, thank you. Today, I will be talking about my research and looking at racial disparities in Parkinson's disease. Most of this racial disparities is looking at, within this particular research, was looking at geospatial analysis within the urban community among African American, uh, um, African American. So moving along, I have no disclosure, nothing to disclose. I do not have any financial or other relationships with manufacturers. <clears throat> And the next topic, I'd like to talk about my objectives. Um, I want to give a brief background or overview of understanding what Parkinson's disease is and how we define it here. We'll talk about the epidemiology, pathophysiology, and risk factors associated with Parkinson's disease. I'll also talk about, of course, my research and the grant uh, for all research, talking about the objective and subject specific aims, and as well as the summary. So in the United States, there are an estimate of about 1 million cases of Parkinson's disease among individuals aged greater than 45 years old. This number was projected to rise in 2020 and double to 1.2 million cases by 2030. It is estimated that direct medical expenses for the PD population were approximately 8 $0.1 billion going to indirect costs toward nursing, home care, and $6.3 billion to lost days at work, disability, and home health costs. Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disorder. This is a degeneration or breakdown of the substantia nigra in the striatum. There are also Lewy bodies, which are aggregate of alpha-synuclein, ubiquitin, and neo neurofilament protein that accumulate in cells. The picture here shows a healthy uh, person on the uh, with slide A saying A, and then as you can see in slide B, where the person with Parkinson's disease has a degeneration or decrease or lack of um, the the aggregates of the same substantia nigra in the striatum. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the risk factors associated with Parkinson's disease. This begins with looking at various age. Uh, if a person has symptoms or features of Parkinson's disease younger than 40 or um, Sometimes they can have juvenile findings, even less younger than that. There could be uh, risk factors related to genetics. Um, but most of the part, most of the time, people who are older are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and the mean age is usually 60 years old. And women are usually more likely to have Parkinson's than men. There again, the genetic component or percentage is about 10 to 15 percent. There are other factors such as environmental factors. We know about uh, some of them being um, heavy metals and manganese. The next slide, um, moving along, I want to talk about uh, Parkinson's disease as the diagnosis. So this is a clinical diagnosis. There's no testing that we have of yet to really determine what when a person has Parkinson's disease, meaning you'd have to go to see a, a physician or a provider um, to be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And what we look for are features, clinical features such as bradykinesia. Bradykinesia is really just decreased um, features or no or lack of movement. Uh, facial features, maybe some people you may hear say masked faces and maybe one other additional feature such as rigidity or stiffness, postural instability. And many of this, we um, want to rule out other possible findings because there can be things that are mimickers of Parkinson's disease that are actually isn't Parkinson. Um, as we move along, 
the big controversy here is that in general, it can be very challenging to diagnose people with Parkinson's disease, especially early onset, because of the need for examinations to determine the diagnoses. So it's a clinical diagnosis, meaning that you need someone to look for certain features and signs of Parkinson's disease. Some of these features and signs may not occur initially. It may um, there may be a delay or they may not have some of the typical findings such as a tremor um, that some people, most provide people or uh, physicians or providers are aware of. Um, so some of those things can already be a hindrance. And then when you add on um, various different um, barriers and race being one of them, we already know that European um, people of European descent have a higher incidence and prevalence of Parkinson's disease compared to African Americans. But African Americans experience later diagnoses and poor outcomes. We already know that there are differences uh, in the diagnosis that are not related to socioeconomic status, attitudes, comorbidities, or uh, first time visits with a neurologist. And therefore, we're trying to figure out what other factors could contribute to this in addition to the biases that we already are aware of. And the question we wanted to ask was, are there environmental factors that may impact Parkinson's disease in the African-American community? And the objective was to identify the geographic distribution of Parkinson's disease in uh, the metropolitan area. So again, how do we evaluate the environmental factors? That can be a bit challenging and um, trying to figure out what environmental factors among African Americans may impact the diagnosis. So first we started with establishing a database within the Metro Atlanta area. And we use geospatial analysis with the help of uh, our colleagues in Boston University. And we looked at the uh, almost like a heat map to determine what areas or pockets had a higher uh, prevalence or number of people with Parkinson's disease within that region. And to do that, we reviewed ICD-10 codes for people with Parkinson's disease um, from 2014 to 2019. Uh, they were de-identified and analyzed through REDCap. Uh, we extracted any healthcare records and um, linked this to the geospatial data to identify these environmental, um, these mainly the areas, not the factors just yet. We had to identify the, the location. And the PD database was expanded by geocoding and linking census tract data. And we conduct, conducted spatial analysis of the PD data to identify tracts and clusters using hotspot and um, insulin Moreland test for spatial autocorrelation. And what we found was the review of the demographics beginning with their age, mean age was about 70 years old. Um, we had a good representation of black, which is 57.7%, non Hispanic white was 30.1%, women were 40.1%, and men were 59.9%. And moving along, we have the crude rate of Parkinson's disease, which is the percentage of Black uh, or African Americans of, um, and the percent of residents below poverty by consensus tract for Georgia. So we saw that there was a large percentage of people with Parkinson's disease within the metro Atlanta area within their four areas, so main, two main counties. And this, um, area show that the people, the hotspot or the areas with Parkinson's disease, they're among Blacks or African Americans who are below the poverty line level. And as you can see here, we found a significant association among low income regions with the metro, within the metropolitan areas and Parkinson's disease. And as the percentage of African-Americans increase within the census tract, there is an increased odds of Parkinson's disease. 
So in summary, we know that Parkinson's disease is diagnosed based on a clinical finding and features and that there can be challenges with early di with diagnoses in general, starting with early diagnoses um, with people with Parkinson's disease. But when you add uh, race and other factors and features, we may notice that there's a delay in the diagnosis, not just due to clinical needs, which we are already aware of, as well as appropriateness of care, discrimination, biases. But then we wanted to note that maybe there was an additional factor that we have not really looked at, and that might be environmental. Now, what are these specific Environmental factors will be hard to say, uh, but we wanted to at least start with finding uh, clusters or what we call hotspot or locations where uh, we saw a larger number of people with Parkinson's disease and then determining in future studies what these people within this area may have in common if they are living closer to the expressway or the highway or other factors or features that we just did, were not able to um, determine based on this particular research. So that is our hope um, for us to do in the future. And uh, thank you again for allowing me to speak about this important topic.